Uh, good afternoon. Um, we just concluded the meeting, and you probably have heard. Um, we had uh, what was generally with committee meetings three days of, I would say, really productive discussions. Um, the theme probably goes back to sort of what we shared with the ownership in the initial sessions, which is um, the important position that we're in now and the ability for us to continue to focus on meeting our challenges, but also taking advantage of our opportunities because of the stability we have, uh, because of where the game is. Uh, this is a great opportunity for the NFL to uh, step on the gas and continue to make progress and really try to take our game to another level on a global basis, as well as uh, we heard from a number of our partners, uh, new partners, Skydance, YouTube, that we're here to talk about uh, what we think are really innovative, exciting, uh, partnerships are going to, I believe, and I think our ownership and our clubs do, uh, think we're going to take us to another level. So we're really excited about where we are, uh, but lots more work to, to be done. So I know you've gotten updates from a lot of people, so I'll just take your questions. Let's begin here with Judy. Uh, oh. I can hear you. Hi, Roger. Uh, <laughs> on the way out of the meeting, John Mara uh, said he was adamantly opposed to the idea of flexing Thursday night games. He called the idea abusive and made a plea to consider the fans who go to the games. And he said, uh, I mean, what are we thinking about? Uh, what is your feeling on flexing Thursday night games? And I know it's going to come up again in May, so where do you think it's headed? Uh, well, we'll see. Um, listen, there, were, there isn't anybody in that room, anybody in uh, any of our organizations who don't put our fans first. Uh, that's really important. Um, obviously, providing the best matchups for our fans is part of what we do. Um, that's part of what I think our scheduling has always focused on. And Flex has been a part of that. Um, we are very judicious with it, and we're very careful with it. Uh, and we look at all of the impacts to that. Um, and so before those decisions are made, I think we average – uh, in the years we've been doing it, about a flex and a half a year. It can vary any particular year. So it's a very important thing for us to, to balance with the, what I would call season ticket holders and the in-stadium audience. But uh, we have millions of fans who also watch on television. Um, and so reaching them is a balance that you always strike and making sure we do it right. Let's go here front, Mark Massey. Roger, what was the extent of the discussions at this meeting on Daniel Snyder's situation and the commander's sale? And what do you expect the next steps to be, both on the sale and the Mary Jo White report? Uh, well, both are ongoing. Um, we did briefly report on both of those. Um, they're both ongoing processes. Uh, the Washington commanders um, are obviously the ones conducting the process on the sale. When there's a transaction, they will notify us, and um, we will proceed on that one. Um, and Mary Jo White, uh, we gave a brief update that she's in the middle of her process, and uh, when she concludes that, we will also brief the ownership as well as make the findings public. Let's go to the back, Albert Brewer. Yeah, Roger, your players have been... I don't know where you right are. Here, right here. Uh, yep. Your players have been pretty consistently critical of Thursday Night Football and, you know, outspoken in the way they feel after some of those games. Um, and the Super Bowl MVP, Patrick Mahomes... I reacted negatively to the idea of having to play two Thursday night games in one season. Um, and now you're talking about flexing games in and everything else. How would you respond to players who are concerned that maybe you're putting a broadcast partner on Amazon over their own interests in making some of these changes to Thursday night football? I don't think we are putting Amazon over players' interests. Um, you know, we've always been looking at the data with respect to injuries and the impact on players. That was that drove our decisions uh, throughout the first 12 or so years of Thursday night football uh, and how it's evolved. And I think we have data that's very clear. Uh, it doesn't show higher injury rate. But we recognize shorter weeks. Uh, we, we went through this in COVID, too. Um, it's, you know, you, we had to have a lot of flexibility in those areas. So those are obviously different circumstances. But um, we work very closely on that. Um, I hear from a lot of players directly, too. They love the 10 days afterwards. Uh, in fact, they call it a mini-buy. 
And so there's some benefits on that side. So you have different views. You want to consider all of them. But players have different views. Coaches have different views. And we have to try to balance all of that. Sal, back center. Hi, Roger. Sal Capaccio, WGR in Buffalo. Hey. Last year, the Bills and the Chiefs almost played an AFC championship game at a neutral site because of the inequity in games played. Out of that came some talk that maybe the league would eventually want to do that, have the conference championship games played at a neutral site. Is that something the league is looking at going forward? We have not looked at that. I, I've not heard that as a proposal either internally or from our clubs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kaylin, the athletics. Hey, Roger. Um, the NFLPA released 32 team report cards a few weeks ago where they surveyed 1,300 players across the league about the working conditions at their clubs. Um, what was your reaction to those report cards, and what takeaways did you learn from going through those? Uh, I didn't go through those. Um, I talked to Dee about it. He told me the day it came out, I think. Um, so I haven't seen it in detail. Um, I've seen some summaries of that. Um, but, you know, we... In the collective bargaining process, we agreed to consider different scientific approaches to getting the players input on different things that we want to approach. Uh, we always look to hear that the players input, uh, and I'm sure the clubs look at that and they'll decide if there are things uh, that they're either interested in doing or whether uh, they already had some plans on board that they think are the better approach. But I think player input's always a good thing. On the way. I didn't say. I said I saw the summary. I didn't have time to read all through the entire summaries. I haven't seen them all. Darren, D.C.? Uh, Roger. Yeah. Darren Haynes, WSA 9 in Washington, D.C. Uh, the commanders are going through the process of a sale. Do you still believe and support that the Mary Jo White report should still be released if Dan Snyder is the owner or not? Yes, we committed to releasing the findings. We will. Uh, and then a follow-up. Not too long ago, uh, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones says that he agrees to release the report because, quote, he knows everything in the report. Do you know why he would say that? What's he referring to? I'm sorry. To the Mary Jo White report, that he, he, he believes that they should release the report. And then, I, and then we ask why he says, because we know, cause I know everything in the report. Well, that would be impossible since the only person I know of that knows anything about the investigation is Mary Jo White and her counterparts. So uh, I don't know any of those things. Mary Jo White is a professional. She's incredibly thorough. She's not giving access to anybody. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm comfortable on that point. John Jones, Jonathan. Thanks. Hey, Roger. Hey. Uh, you were talking about stepping on the gas, taking things to the next level. Obviously, the league's relationship with sports gambling continues to grow. More discussions <laughs> here this week. How would you describe the depth and the health of that relationship today, and how do you view it can grow more in the next year, two, three? Are you specifically talking about legalized sports betting, or are you talking about broader? Just so I'm clear, I don't... Legalized sports betting, yes. On legalized sports betting? Correct. Listen, I think, uh, we've been, um, I think we've been very measured in our approach. Um, as you know, we're responding to changes that were made in our country and in the laws. Um, and we obviously are being very consistent with that. But we've, from day one, also said that we want to be very cautious in protecting the integrity of our game. I mean, ultimately, making sure that that's done correctly and that um, our fans have confidence in that and our partners have confidence in that. Uh, but it, it clearly, for an element of the population, is something they're interested in doing. We want to make sure that whatever is done is done properly, effectively, and safeguards the game. Chicago. Hey, Roger. Patrick Finley with the Chicago Sun-Times. Hey, Pat. Uh, the Bears closed on land in Arlington Heights in February. What's the NFL's opinion on uh, whether on their decision to explore building a stadium there? And do you think it's appropriate for the Chicago Bears to play outside of the city of Chicago? I, listen, I think those are things that um, the Bears have to explore. Is how do they continue to see um, the long-term presentation of their game, and the stadium's a big part of that. Um, they're not the first team to look at areas and at areas outside a city that they play in, um, and so that's something that's a natural thing for our clubs to do. They obviously recognize the lease restrictions they're under, um, so I think investigating and exploring that is something that they owe to their fans and their community. AJ Brett. 
Hey, Roger. AJ Perez, uh, front office reports. Over here. Yep. Um, hi. Uh, Tom Brady was disciplined uh, in part for the play for not cooperating with investigators. It's been reported that um, that uh, that Dan Snyder has not talked to, uh, spoken with Mary Jo White. Did, would would Snyder face any kind of sanctions if he does not indeed participate in a, in a one on one with her? Yeah, I, I'm not going to speculate on that. I think um, Mary Jo White makes the determination as who she speaks to and when she speaks to them. Um, that's what she should do. Um, we'll allow her to do her job, and then we'll see where we are at that point. Jared Bell. Hey, Roger. Jared Bell. Hey, Jared. USA Today Sports. Um, just to follow up on the questions about the commanders, what would be the compelling reason to release the Mary Jo White report if a sale is in the works? And would there be any risk as it relates to the NFL and any separation from Snyder legally? Well, we made that commitment uh, back uh, last February. Um, we made that commitment publicly. We made it in front of Congress. We made it to our clubs. So we'll continue with that. Is there any risk there in terms of what separation agreement may occur? What's the separation agreement? Well, if the I, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. I think we've been very clear. Um, the commanders were very clear that the findings would be made public. So uh, we're going to continue on that, of course. Ben Bowen. Hey, Roger. Ben Bowen from hey, the Boston ben. Globe. Uh, Jim Trotter of NFL Media um, announced that his contract wasn't being re renewed. And he said that he believes the fact that he challenged you in a couple of press conferences about NFL Media's diversity record uh, contributed to that decision not to renew him. Do you have any comment? Uh, to what he said? I, I wasn't part of that decision and actually was just made aware of it about 10 minutes before I walked in here. So, um, th no, I don't believe that's had anything to do with it. What's your bar report? Uh, hi, Roger. Uh, is the NFL doing enough to help black businesses? Um, over the years, there's been a lot of complaints that maybe you guys don't show enough love to black businesses, especially major events. I'm aware of the initiatives that just passed, but are you doing enough and are you providing the budgets in your league office to make sure that your staff has the resources to make sure that they're doing enough to help black businesses as promised in 2020? I'm smiling because I, I w I'm the first one to say we've never done enough in probably just about every area of our business. Um, we, we always look to do more. So uh, we can and will do more. Um, but I'm, I'm proud of many of the initiatives that we're undertaking. Our, our focus on this is not just to contract with Black America. We have a variety of other programs that are going on that are outside of that that I think are showing real results. But yeah, absolutely, we have more work to do, and we will. Tom Powell, sir. Roger, there was a team proposal about providing an alternative to the onside kick with a fourth and 20 play. Last season, only 4% of onside kicks were recovered. Rich McKay said earlier today there's no appetite for that play to go away. But for you, as both a commissioner and a fan of the game, do you have an appetite for seeing your best quarterbacks deciding those moments and not a kicker? No, you know, the, the, the competition committee talked a great deal about this, about keeping what they say the foot in the game. So I, I think that that's an element of the game that I think is interesting. As you know, going back to the extra point, uh, I think we look at all plays and want to have uh, some excitement related to it, as well as health and safety factors. And when uh, you know, I think our success rate is three percent this year, uh, not four. I think that's where it is. But and that that's exceptionally low. And I think uh, one of the discussions we had through the competition committee and on the floor today is. That's an important play and can be a very exciting play and uh, looking at alternatives to try to bring that back. Fourth and 20 is one element. Um, it's obviously not a kick, but it certainly could be an exciting alternative. But at the end of the day, they tabled that. And let's look at this play a little bit more. We'll do a couple more. Brooks from Houston. Hey, Roger Brooks, coming from the Houston Chronicle. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. The Texans were talked to fifth round pick in early March from uh, the Deshaun Watson uh, undisclosed compensation. Was there another 
review through that because in August there was the fine and everything there was I'm just curious about the timeline uh, from in between was there something that came up later on to lead to that or was that just part of the original process of the investigation into all of that uh, I'm, I'm not sure your, your August reference I would say uh, we reported on that actually this afternoon to the clubs that that had occurred um, the information was discovered that was where we saw the violation in the context of the personal conduct policy investigation. And so that's where we saw the information. And so that's where we, what we pursued. And we finished um, not just the discipline, but also the appeal of that. The last question, Josina. Hi, Roger. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, good. Josina Anderson, CBS Sports. I just wanted to know if you could tell us whatever you know about the current status of uh, Brian Flores' case versus the NFL and what you personally think about his progress from being a defensive assistant with the Steelers to now being a defensive coordinator at Minnesota should have on the overall merits of the points that he's trying to make in this case. Well, I can't talk specifically about the case. Um, I would tell you this, I'm a huge fan of Brian Flores. He's a great football coach and uh, I have great respect for him as a man. Um, I think the Vikings are lucky to have him as a defensive quarter. I think he's going to continue to be a successful coach in the NFL. and um, I, We'll see on the case. We did have a quick update on that, the, the status of that, and the decisions that the judges made recently, uh, which uh, our attorneys said that they thought was the appropriate step. So we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously. Okay, thank you very much. Safe okay, travels. thank you.